In this video, we're going to take a look at the library where you keep all of the settings for your tools that you have. There are two ways to access this. The first way is to select the icon under Toolpath Operations, which is here. Another way that you can do this is if you create a toolpath, and then when you go to select a tool, it will take you into the tool database. Now, one thing to bear in mind is, let's say that I just select any tool that I have here. One thing to bear in mind is if you click this drop down menu here and you change any of the settings here, so let's say I change that feed rate to be 40. This changes it just for this particular toolpath, okay? And it won't change it within the library. So if you do want to make a permanent change, then you need to do it within the library. Otherwise, you will have to keep on doing this for every toolpath, okay? So if I open up the tool database, which is here, make sure that you select toolpaths Otherwise, it will look like this. So if you select Toolpaths and then come down to Tool Database. And let me just close this metric tools. So when you first open up the Tool Database, it will look a lot like this. Now, I'll be completely honest with you. Most of the settings... Now, I'll be completely honest with you. Most of the time... I just delete all of these tools that are already in here. The reason being is that they are really, really conservative. And I would rather create my own tools and my own groups of tools for maybe for different materials, for instance. Now, I'll show you if you want to modify a tool that's already in there, first of all. So if we open up, let's say, the inch tools, and what you will see, you will have different groups, aluminium, steel, wood or plastic, or HDU. So if I go to the wood or plastic, and then you've also got groups for roughing and 2D finishing, which are most of the time end mills. You've got 3D finishing, which are ball nose tools. You've got V carving tools. And then you've got some more specialist tools below that, like OG tools, for instance, and form tools. Right, so let's say this half an inch ball nose, I wanted to change that. There was a speed on there that I didn't like. I wanted to make it go a bit faster every time that I used it. So I can select it and then go to edit. And then this allows me to edit this tool. And whenever I use this in the future, it will always use the same settings that I've edited it to. So let's say the spindle speed. Let's say I actually wanted that to run at 18,000 RPM and everything else I'm absolutely happy with. Okay, so just select OK and that's updated it. And you can see here under spindle speed, it's updated it to 18,000. Now, when you do change these and you create your own tools, what I would advise you to do is click Save Copy. And this basically exports the whole of the database out. And then you've got a backup of it just in case your computer crashes or something and you need to reinstall it onto another computer. Now, you can also do this really quickly. Let's say I did still want the 15,000 RPM and I wanted to create a copy of it really quickly. What you could do is just select to copy and that creates a copy of this half inch. And now what I can do is edit that, and let's call this, let's say, 15,000 RPM in the description, just so I know. And I'll put that back to 15,000 RPM. So now I've got the same tool, but I've got two entries for it. One running at 18,000 RPM and one at 15,000 RPM. Now, if you want to delete any of these, just select Delete and it will delete that ball nose that I've just created. Okay, so let's close all of that now. And I'm going to create my own folder. So if I go to Tools and Groups, and then I'm going to add a group. 
okay? And I'm going to call this, let's say, my tools, something very original, okay? And then you can also add a group in there. So let's say this is for cutting, let's say, ply, okay? And then I want to add a tool to this. So if I click Add Tool, and then select the type of tool that I want. So a slot drill, which is basically an end mill. So click there. Description, let's say that this is, let's say an eight millimeter compression tool. And it's also located in tool number one. Now, if you've got a single headed machine, you haven't got a tool changer, you don't need to worry about this. Just do everything as tool number one. If you do have a tool changer, then what I would do is just select the tool number that corresponds to where this is located in the carousel, and then it will just go and find it. Okay, so let's do this for this one in millimeters because I'm used to using millimeters for the feed rates. And then rate units, I'm gonna go millimeters per minute. Now make sure that you get this right. The amount of times that I've actually created something in millimeters a second, and then actually thought that I'd done it in minutes, and I put, say, the feed rate to be at about 8,000 millimetres per minute, but it was actually 8,000 millimetres a second. And it caused a little bit of problem when it got sent to the machine because it just wouldn't run. And the whole reason being is that I chose millimetres per second rather than millimetres per minute. So just make sure that you've got the right rate of units so if you're doing inches per minute let's say make sure that you you are using inches per minute and not inches per second okay just a little word of warning the diameter let's say eight millimeter diameter now you can also lie about this if you wanted things to cut smaller or cut larger the program doesn't actually know what diameter you're going to actually put into the machine. So the diameter, let's say eight millimeters, step down, this is entirely dependent upon your tool manufacturer. What I would do is contact them, maybe go online, and they should have sizes for different materials that you can just enter in here, okay? A lot of this, I'll be completely honest, is a lot of trial and error, okay? So let's say the step down, because it's a compression bit, Let's say that I'm going to go, let's say six mil. Okay, and the step over, I would advise you to do this maybe 50% down to 40%. You've got to make sure that you don't get the cusp. So every time that it runs along the job, it needs to then, if it comes back on itself, it then needs to step over. So this is the size that it steps over. Obviously, if you do this quite small, so if I were to go let's say one, which is 13%, every time that it came over, it would just step over one millimeter. So if I was doing quite a large pocket or recess, this would take quite a long time to do. So dependent on this step over is much dependent on the time, but also the finish when you're doing more complicated area clearance tool paths. So what I normally do when I'm doing that at around about 40%, the spindle speed, I'm going to set this up, let's say 21,000 RPM. And the feed rate, let's do this, let's say about six meters a minute. And the plunge rate, normally do that around about half, so three meters a minute. Okay, if you want to put some notes in here, you can do so. So maybe you want to put a reminder like so, just to remind you to ramp in when you select the tool. So select OK, and there you can see I've got my eight millimeter compression. And you can see that I've also got my notes here, remember to ramp in, okay? Now you can do this for a whole host of tools that you have, whole host of materials. Now you can still use this same tool, let's say for instance, cutting a completely different material. Just create a copy of it, and then you can just change the feed rate or the spindle speed to suit. 
Now, as I said before, make sure once you've done all this to save a copy and put it somewhere safe, just in case you ever need to come back to that. So if I select OK now, and then go to a tool path, and then select a tool, you can see that I've got under my tools and ply this eight millimeter compression tool. And then I can select that and it becomes the active tool. And then I can generate my tool path using this tool. You'll also notice that all the speeds are what I entered. Okay, so if you want to change something for good, do it in the tool database. And it's basically your library of all of your tools. So that's how you use the tool database in CarveCode Maker.